Hello and welcome to another episode of Watch Collective 2 podcast. My name is Ahmed Gaudet. I'm your host and one of the Watch Collective 2. Um, and now we have part two with Omar uh, Shawi uh, from Magana. And today we're going to be focusing on Magana itself. Uh, thank you so much, Omar, for joining. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And, and apologies for talking so much in the first No, no, uh, it's... It's really part. informative and really enjoyable, so it deserves to be a two parts y- episode. You are too kind. Thank you, you are too so kind. much. <laughs> Thank you. And and last last time and last episode we ended with um the story of you uh almost being dropped uh with the Daytona in Paris. Yeah. That was the initial flame, let's say, that started the whole thing. Am I right? So so it it was uh, it was the initial flame. Yes. Yes. And. Talking about, first of all, I really want to ask this question, but what does Magana mean? Ah, so, as you know, I'm Moroccan. How do you say watch in, in Egyptian? Sa'a. Sa'a. That's what they say in Lebanon, in most yeah, of yeah. their... In Arabic. Arabic. <laughs> uh, in Tunisia, they say Morgana. Okay. And in Morocco, we say Magana. Is it that simple? So it's it's it's, it's a watch in Moroccan dialect. That's it. Arabic Moroccan dialect. Absolutely. It's very simple. And... um. I'm not going to ask you how did the brand started, but I would like to know more about the values and the concept behind the brand. So what I was saying is that when when that incident happened uh, in in France, I realized that as an entrepreneur, uh, I needed to create something that could outlive me, something that could carry um, carry on without me uh, for my children. Uh, and I'm not talking just materialistically and financially. I'm I'm talking about values. If I were to, and I will someday, uh, leave this world, I want my children to look up at whatever it is that I have done and say, "Oh, my dad did do this." Yes, you know. Uh, and so it was very important for me, above and beyond the product uh, itself. Um, I, my dream is for Magana to be perceived as a brand more than a watch. The watch is the product. The, the product is not the brand. I don't know if I make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when for we, me, it makes sense. <laughs> when, we, when we spoke uh, the first time we met, I told you about this wonderful book by Simon Sinek yes. called Start With Why uh, that I read uh, during the COVID days, actually. And it really struck me when he defines the... When he says Apple, when they br- when they drop a new iPhone, people will queue overnight, will will camp outside of the Apple store to be the first to buy it. Samsung, not so much. Yeah, equally good product. They do what they're supposed to do, and some would argue that Samsung products are even better, perhaps. Uh, but the point is that Apple was able to connect on an emotional level as a brand with their consumers and Samsung couldn't, not as much. And when you ask why, Apple, their raison d'etre, why they exist is challenge the status quo. That's how they say it. How do you do that? Our products, uh, you know, they're beautifully designed, they're this, this, that, we challenge the status quo. And Samsung is... You need a phone, we make really great phones and we have a camera on them and then, and then. So it's two different approaches. And inspired by this, I was like, okay, why do I make a watch brand? What's the point? Does the world need another watch brand? <laughs> not really. Especially by a Moroccan guy who's not a watchmaker. <laughs> you know, who's not into Yeah, but at least you come from the watch industry. I know people. Yeah, that that's the one thing not... I got going for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's one point for you, you know. <laughs> Um, And so what is my why? Now, as I said earlier, I've been in Dubai and the UAE for um, now 25 years. Uh, And this is my home as much as Morocco in the sense that I have lived here actually a little longer than I have lived back home. Uh, And this place works. Why does it work? Uh, because we, the majority of people that you meet in Dubai or in the UAE come from somewhere else. And every time you meet somebody, you will ask or get asked the same three questions. Where are you from? How long have you been here? And what do you do? And the first question, the where are you from part, gives you the opportunity 
to discover new cultures and the there is a reciprocity from there you yes. tell me i'm from egypt how about you i'm from morocco have you ever been to morocco no oh you should visit and it gives me a platform to speak about my culture my country my cuisine my history my uh, art uh, artists my football team in in this yes. case <laughs> uh, with a lot of pride without fear of judgment no and you, i give you the same opportunity so culture is despite what people might think is extremely strong here we are living in a mosaical society and a very um, culturally neutral environment as well uh, benevolent i want to say okay. uh, the second element um, is again dubai is today not just dubai the uae 12 and a half million people 70 or 80 percent of which come from about 200 different countries mm -hmm. the country is uh 53 years old okay look what was achieved the uae had sent a, mo uh, a man into space satellites into space we've built one of the most vibrant cities in the world one of the best economies in the middle east that is not necessarily oil dependent Uh, diversification, education, tourism, um, every you single thing. So why that 200 nationalities, 13 million or 14 million people coming together, working together with no politics, with no other agenda than to make a better life for themselves and their communities, yes. right? So that's the power of coming together. So that's the second value that I want to put in Magana. And the third value is mindfulness. Wherever you go in this country, you will never see two people fighting. Not in traffic, not in restaurants or bars or clubs or beaches, in schools. Nobody fights ever. Why? Because everyone is mindful of how their words and action impact the next person. Yes. And so to me, these are three values. I mean, if they work for the UAE, they're good enough for me. Yeah, uh, And I figured, okay, let me try and see how I could use these values as, as the bedrock of Magana. But then I needed to go a little bit beyond that. And so I start looking at, so you're a marketeer, right? I start looking at marketing and communication, what's being done in the watch industry. And you notice that usually brands, even micro brands, we speak usually of three topics, heritage, Our brand has been established by Mr. So-and-so 250 years ago. We have heritage, we have history. Okay, great, I don't have that. Second thing is craftsmanship. We have these master, master watchmakers uh, that do the best finishing and these dial makers with the enamel technique. Yeah. And, and I don't have that either. And the third one is technical prowess. We are the first to do an ultra light, ultra slim, ultra whatever, thinnest, movement, slimmest, thinnest, slimmest, biggest, fattest, fastest, etc. And good for them. I don't have that either. So in my communication as a brand, I cannot compete for visibility with these three topics. And these are the only three topics that people speak about in the industry. I think since I don't have any of them, and I don't have a lot of means to promote Magana, why should I try and compete in, 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 within a realm that I'm, I'm not... At, at best, I'm as good as the next guy. At best. For the moment. And so I figured, okay, what is it that I can take as a topic and make it my own? And then I realized something which really shocked me after so many years in the industry. I realized that not a single watch brand, not a single one, speaks of time. We all measure time. Nobody speaks of what time really is, what it really means. And so with a really good friend of mine uh, called Reda, who is a marketing genius, him and I went to middle and high school together back home in Morocco, and he's a consultant in communication and marketing. And he was helping me when I was trying to figure this out. And he's the one who helped me uh, uh, articulate what I'm about to say. 
And so the idea is that time is the great equalizer. When you wake up in the morning, you're going to be awake for the next 16, 17 hours. Those are the same hours that last the same 60 minutes that Elon Musk would get, that Tom Cruise would get, that uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed would get. Look at the stuff they get done and the stuff I get done. Or me get dying. Or, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you in the same bucket, <laughs> whatever this bucket is. Yeah. Right. So, and it's the same minutes, right? Yes. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the other thing is the conversation that I had with my father and uh, uh, one of my uncles and my aunts and my mom uh, and my mother-in-law uh, who are all in their 60s, 70s, soon 80s. And I ask them, if you were to go back to your 20s, assuming you'd have the same career, the same wealth, the same spouse, what would you do differently? And all of them have given a version or other of the following. A, I wish I had known my parents more than just mom and dad. What made them tick? What made them laugh? What uh, were they passionate about? Because ultimately, especially as Arabs, we know our parents only as mom and dad. Yes. The second is, I wish I had spent time with uh, more time with my siblings to be friends with my siblings and not just, you know, we share parents. And third, I wish we I had spent more time with my children when they were willing to spend time with me. Because now in my old age, they're busy with life and I don't see them often. Mm. And so I, I have come to realize that no matter your social status in life, wealth, uh, recognition, success, or lack thereof, doesn't matter. The only regrets we have is how we have wasted time as we lived focusing on the wrong things, focusing in the pursuit of careers and money and wealth and success, women, whatever it is. Uh, not that it's wrong, it's absolutely fine, but just be aware that that time is not coming back. Yeah, the time is the only unidirectional thing in life, you know. Voilà. Um, and so from there, and with the help of Reda that I mentioned earlier, we extracted the concept of make time for who and what matters. And there are simple things that can be done. And so if you look at the, uh, our Instagram page, uh, magana.watches, Thanks for the follow. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the screen the way I want it. So when you look at our Instagram page, uh, every now and then we have a suggestion. When was the last time you fill in the blanks? When was the last time? Actually, let me ask you. When was the last time you cooked for your wife? Never. When was the last time you read a book about a topic you didn't know anything about? Two when, years, maybe. When was the last time you watched a documentary? Uh, last night. I love the commentaries, to be honest. When was the last time um, you got silly with your daughter? Today. When was the last time you called your cousin? Years, years ago. Years ago, unfortunately. So now what I'm doing is that I'm planting seeds of things that you could do. It's so food on, for thought as well. Absolutely. So when you'll be driving back home tonight, and you have your cousin, I would assume, in Egypt, you know, the guy that you did everything with, that you haven't spoken to in years, you're going to call him up yeah. out of the blue. I haven't seen you in forever. This guy spoke to me about this thing, and I decided to call you <laughs> to check on you. How are you? You're going to spend five minutes. Look at your smile. Yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah. spend five minutes talking with him with that smile, him with that smile. And after you hang up, you'll know that... These five minutes are the best five minutes you have spent today. What did it cost? Absolutely nothing. True. But that's time well spent. But I, I, I now get, when, when you give this example, I now get the essence of getting the, the brand. Usually, Omar brands, they reach a very high level of marketing when they generate a sentimental feeling, which either towards the brand or related to the brand. For example, when we talk about, uh, as you mentioned, when you talk about um, uh, a brand like, I'll give you an example, uh, Apple, mm -hmm. you talk about like 
out of the box something really uh, but when you talk about the 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 sentimental value out of it uh, you feel successful for example it's a feeling of success when you get an apple device but what i like about the brands a relation to 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 um uh, being sentimental it's not sentimental with the brand itself it it makes you sentimental to things around the brand not yes, the brand to itself to the universe yeah. exactly exactly uh, and and let me know if i'm getting that wrong but this is what i'm no look it's it's uh, you you're not getting it wrong absolutely not and because it's open to interpretation my my um, my my objective as uh, as a brand founder is uh, for people to see beyond the product i know that my product can be better and when i'll make it a hundred times better it can still be better but what i also know is that for you to decide to pick my watch versus any other you want to associate it with something that makes you tick yes right yes so my message to you is whenever you look at the time on your magana make sure that it reminds you to take the time for who and what matters i totally agree that, i totally that agree. really is the point um and maybe in the favor of time i think um maybe we can go through the the first model yeah right which uh, um comes in two different shapes till now right no no so uh back in my days in the corporate world i was observing mr georges kern who okay. at some point was also my ceo at roger duby and uh he he was the man who was instrumental in the uh, in the success of iwc and one of the things that he did that was very smart is that uh, at the time there were six or seven iwc watch collections and every year at uh, sihh before watches and wonders uh, only one collection would be renovated and everything else would remain the same which gives a longevity for the collection you know if um, i don't know if this year we are renovating the portuguese whatever novelty we're putting today they're going to be in stores and promoted for the next six years yeah because every year we'll do something else and i found that it was very smart and very honest vis-a-vis -vis the consumers who don't need to keep running after the next yes uh, model right uh, now i i don't have that time i don't have the same budget but i do like the philosophy so the idea was okay i have three values um, culture togetherness mindfulness i'll start with the first value culture let me build the collection around that so it's three times the same watch with uh, the same complication the same shape is just three different executions mm -hmm. and so uh, how do i explain culture uh, or how do i translate culture into into the watch so um, the first thing is what topic the culture is very very vast right you could do art you could do whatever it is and as I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a history buff uh, and I'm a very proud Moroccan. So I was like, okay, how about this? There are some places in the world where if you close your eyes and you're there, you will smell, you will hear, you open your eyes, you will see, you can touch, you can even taste the same stuff that your ancestors would have experienced a thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, uh, you're you're from Cairo originally? Alexandria. Actually. Alexandria. Okay, so Alexandria, uh, you had the uh, bibliotheque, the uh, uh, library and, of Alexandria. Yeah, and you have the, the the lighthouse, and you have so there are cer certain things that it's like they're frozen in time, and you would taste the same type of food and see the same color and hear the same sounds from the the um, uh, the birds and uh, and so I, w I was like, okay, th this is something. So how about this? In Fa in Morocco, there's a city called Fas, which was founded in, in the 8th century. And about one or two hundred years after it was founded, a um, Tunisian lady called Fatma Al-Fehri moved there. She was a widow uh, and she was very wealthy. She financed the building of a mosque and she wanted for that mosque 
to be also a school mm -hmm. where sciences would be taught, mathematics, medicine, as well as religious sciences. That mosque slash school slash university is called al Qarawiyin. Now, very few people know this, but al Qarawiyin has been, since it's been established it's around the 8th or the 9th century, to this very day, every year, there are graduates coming out of it. Mm. It is the longest, oldest running university in the world, founded by a woman, by an Arab woman, in an Arab and Muslim country. Mm -hmm. And as a Fasi, my family yes. is originally from Fas, I'm super proud of that. And I realized that when I say Morocco to people, they know of Casablanca, thank you, Humphrey Bogart. They know <laughs> of Tangiers, thank you to the spies, and they know Marrakesh, thanks to the parties. But a lot, a, a few people have gone through the trouble to go to Fas and visit Fas. No. Like, all right, let me pay tribute to Fas. Now, Fas, as an old city, uh, has its older uh, part is surrounded by a wall that used to protect it from invaders. And to go inside the city, you need to go through a gate, which you find here or here. 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 Uh, one of the gates is called Bab Bujlud. Uh, which means? Uh, it's not too far from the leather tanners. Al Jlud. Oh, I'm like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I got it. So, that's the first cue. Then the second cue is when you go into these places, you will see that cobblestones that you're walking on are very uh, polished. Okay. Okay. So that's the finishing that we have around the case uh, inside with the indexes. Yes. Uh, but the walls of the houses and the outer wall of the city is all grained and rugged. So we've done the rugged finishing uh, in the center dial. In center, in center dial, yes. And then uh, in terms of complication, uh, one thing that uh, I had realized back to my Paris incident was that I asked myself if it were possible to make a qualitative watch of really great quality, great finishing at an affordable price, a watch that I would want to buy. Now, I do own a few chronographs because they really look good but I never use the function. And so I asked myself, why don't we find enough watches that look like chronographs, that feel like chronographs, but that give me a useful information? And, and this is why you went with a triple calendar. And that's why I went with the annual calendar. So I have, uh, I have the day, I have the date, and I have the month. And, and I've, put, I've added a pusher here at, uh, at two o'clock uh, to give it more of the chronograph feel, feel. yes, yes. Uh, and then I pushed the envelope a little further and I asked my uh, the people, my suppliers, to see if we could emulate some of the uh, straps that you can see at Richard Mille, which are very comfortable to wear. They look great and we were able to come up with this strap. But for those who want, we also deliver uh, a leather strap to make it look a little bit more formal. Um, and and let me let me ask you a question. This one is uh, powered by Miyota nine nine one two two two, right? Uh, are you making luxury watches, although it's powered by uh, Japanese Miyota movement? Uh, I know it's a little bit tricky question. No, it's not. No, it's not. The answer is yes, uh, and I'll tell you why. People equate luxury to money price point. Uh, if you take that definition, yes, we are a luxury brand because we are priced uh, over 1500 US dollar for one watch. And that's what a normal person makes a month as an income in most of the world. Even less. <laughs> it, it, exactly, even less. So it would be pretentious of me to say, no, this is not luxury. Uh, I equate luxury to time spent. Okay, uh, what makes this mug less or more luxurious than a handcrafted mug by an artisan in the middle of Japan who spent 20 years learning his craft and spent five hours to make it and another, and another 12 hours cooking it inside the oven? It's just time spent on making yes. it, right? I have spent, uh, and when I say I, uh, obviously I'm talking the about... Team the team, people working with me, my suppliers, etc. 
it's combined years of experience, yeah. combined trials and errors. Actually, I'm wearing on my on my wrist the first prototype ever made. Uh, where you can see if you put them side by side, you can see that uh, with, the, with the watch on your on your wrist, you can you you can yeah, see. Omar, that Omar was was kind enough to lend me <laughs> to test to test drive it, and I, I'm loving it. By the way, uh, thanks. You you, I mean, this took a long time to do, and when this came out, I sat down, I shared it with some of my friends who are watch guys, I took feedback. Uh, we implemented some changes. We changed uh, the most obvious changes would be on the bezel, uh, obviously the collar and on the strap. But there are quite a few other changes that are there. But we have spent a lot of time developing everything, and we'll keep on doing that. In that sense, also it is luxury. Yes. Uh, and lastly, it is a luxury in the sense that nobody needs a wristwatch. True, <laughs> but but this is gonna make every watch a luxury watch as well, uh, other than Casio's. Point, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm sorry to deviate from from the whole no, walk through the 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 models. Uh, so this is related to uh, tribute to Fass, right? So tribute to Fass. So what's Fassy about the watch is the little blue touch on the second hand. Uh, and the texture as well of all the, the watch. So that you will find also on the other watches. Uh, the elements about the wall surrounding the old city, the gates, uh, the finishing, all of that is true because th this collection is named for lack of better words, cities. Mm -hmm. So the first one, tribute to Fas, what you have on your wrist, what we have here is tribute to Istanbul. And the last one that I'm launching very soon is tribute to Kyoto. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, first, this blue, the shade of blue, is what you will find inside the houses, traditional houses of Fas. Inside the walls have a mosaic, a ceramic oh. mosaic that's usually white and blue. Yes. So that's where it comes from. Then Istanbul, wherever you go to Istanbul, you're going to see the Turkish flag everywhere. It's white and, and red. That's what we have on this watch. And... Istanbul is also one of those places you go to the Sultanahmet area. Uh, you are back in Ottoman times. Yeah, yeah, and you I know? mean this color is very representative. To so Turkey. shout out to our friend Mubarak who 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 made this strap for me. So this is a custom strap. Yeah, so actually. shout out to Mubarak. He's a good uh, friend of mine watch, as well. Uh, Opto watch. Um, oh. And Kyoto, um, uh, the. Color orange is representative to it in what way? So, for the life of me, I can't remember the name, but when you visit Kyoto, uh, so you have the city at large and then you have the ancient city, that's what we're talking about. And in the ancient city, you have the imperial palace and all the temples. Yes. And most of these temples, if not all of them, are all black and orange. You can't miss it. If you visit yeah. Kyoto, it would make sense to you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, has, I mean, I mean, it, it looks like it's a signature color there as well. So, it is. Uh, and I, I wish to visit. But let me ask you a couple of questions. Questions related to this model and what you're doing now. Mm. The first question I know, and I've read on your website that you, for each watch sold, you you plant two hundred and twelve trees. Yes. Thank you for bringing that up. I yeah. always forget. So my question to you is, don't Watch. you think, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a, so don't you feel that Magana is a very, very young brand to have a, a environmental commitment? Don't you think it's too much of a burden that you are trying to put? So here's the thing. When, uh, when I started working on the project, uh, I told you I wanted to do it for the right reasons and I defined the values and the why, etc. And one of the things that I want to use Magana for is to convey certain principles of life to my children. This planet is not mine. I'm here just for a few more decades, inshallah, and then I'm away. My children will take over, your children will take over, and theirs after that, etc., etc. We owe it to the next generation to do whatever we can to live this place better than we have found it, right? No matter what, your parents 
have raised you hoping that you'll do better in life than they did and you'll re raise your kids yeah. the, the same way. That's what we all try to do, okay? Now, one thing that our gener that the previous generations before us did not pay attention to because there was a lack of communication and lack of visibility and let's face it, uh, it wasn't that hot. It wasn't. We didn't have that many natural catastrophes back in the 60s and the 70s yes. and the 80s. But our generation has witnessed firsthand what global warming is doing. And so we cannot pretend that it's not there. It is, factually. So what can we do? I can't do much, but this I can do. So I was like, you know what? For every watch we sell, we'll plant 212 trees. That's a lot. You know, no. You know how much it costs? A little below $100 okay. for 212 trees. Okay? A little below $100. It's built into the price of, uh, of the watch as much as the strap is built into the, watch of, uh, the price of the watch or the box. It's just one line. And I've embedded it into my PNL in order to make sure that for as long as I'm in charge and if somebody else takes over after, the trees remain there. It's my signature thing. Yeah, no, no, I you love know? it. And uh, if the idea also from a commercial pure marketing standpoint is that if you hesitate between this brand and that brand and you like them equally and one of them helps you feel good about your purchase, then go for it. Why not? But above and beyond that, if you dig a little deeper about uh, Trees for the Future, which is the NGO that I do this with, what they do is fantastic. They want, so they're not Africans, right? Uh, they want to plant 1 billion trees between Senegal and Somalia. Okay. And the idea is to stop the Sahara Desert from advancing south. Mm, yeah. Okay, to protect the uh, agricultural lands. And uh, what they do is that they would go, let's say you're a farmer, you have a land. They'll come to you and say, okay, we're going to get five meters wide and we're going to plant trees free of charge. This would allow you to do a few things. A, we will produce more oxygen. We will absorb more uh, carbon dioxide. Fine, that's what all trees do. Uh, but it would also improve the quality of your soil. So whatever you plant will be able to get nutrients from those trees. Yes. Uh, but if you want, we have a deal for you. For four years, we will bring you tools that you need. We will help you acquire the right seeds and we will put agricultural engineers at your disposal to help you find the best crops to improve your land. In exchange, we ask you to take a few commitments. Mm -hmm. This is true. Commitment one, nobody below age of 15 is to work on your land. Kids belong in schools. So we help education. Rule number two, at least a third of your workforce on your land must be women and they must get paid. So we help women gain financial independence. Number three, at least two and a half percent of your land should be dedicated to fresh produce, fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. that have a yield of three to four times a year. Yes. Allowing you to feed yourself and whatever you have extra, you can sell in the villages next door. So by planting 212 trees, we are participating actively in improving education, improving financial independence for women in Africa, improving the quality of soil and air, and fighting famine because if everyone produces a little bit of food, everyone shares. Yes. And that is the value of togetherness that I was speaking about earlier. So yeah, yeah. as I'm telling you this, I'm getting a little emotional. I'm really grateful you you brought this to, um, to yeah the yeah and, and forgot about it and and no no it's it's a, it's um it's a big thing for me as well because um, well we, we're both African yeah yeah of course um but but the thing is you don't usually see first of all either you are playing you're a brand and you are playing the game of sustainable product from the whole beginning to till the end which is not the case here i can't afford to be sustainable yeah yeah i know but when i opened the website and i read it 
You, you, as a matter of fact, you didn't tell me when we met previously. I forgot. Yeah, I yeah. keep forgetting. And, and I read it on the website and I was like, why the hell would he do this? I need to understand, you know, and, and it's clear for me. And thank you so much for explaining no, this thank you for thoroughly. And, and I really like it. I, I really like the concept. Um, and maybe it's very impactful because the company is so young as well. So you don't have any of the other deeds. It's not a marketing direction no slash. it is it it also is i'm not gonna lie it also is it gives me an edge of course i i need to fight with whatever uh tools i can find exactly. whatever tools i can afford now the one thing that i'm super proud of is that as we speak we have already planted over twenty-two thousand trees wow wow that's you know uh, that's great in, in, in 12 months uh and the more we grow the more we'll do and uh, you know, even even if the brand was to stop existing tomorrow, twenty two thousand trees are there. Yes, yes, which which is which is great. That's amazing. I, I, it's it's something to make you happy, right? Yeah, absolutely, it makes, it makes me smile. <laughs> yes, um, but but I mean that's that's extremely um, lovely, and and I think it's a very strong messaging. Um, but leaving the cities. Uh, line, which mm -hmm. is one of three lines, I believe, right? Yes. So, uh, culture, togetherness, mindfulness. So, this is the, our first year. Uh, these first two watches were launched in April, in November. This one is coming out in May. Uh, and then by October and November, we launch a new collection and we're going to make a move from Japanese movement made in Hong Kong to Swiss movement, Swiss made. And before we get into the the new model, each model of these is limited to? 212. So why is the 212 here and the 212 plant per watch? Okay. Three per watch. When you call your your family in, in Egypt, what number do you dial? Pl zero, zero, 002 or plus two. Store. Fancy. Yeah, so yeah, the I mean, US is plus one and you're plus two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We, we are 212. <laughs> <laughs> so Morocco is plus 212. That's the country code. That's the country code when you want to call Morocco. Uh, and so it's a wink, just like the name of the brand. It's a wink between me and my fellow countrymen. It's like, a, you know, it's like a, a private joke, if you yeah, will. Yeah, inside you joke. You know, yeah. an inside joke. If you're Moroccan, you get it. If, you, if you're not, uh, it's okay. Yeah, but uh, everyone else watching us is going to get it now. So we have wider uh, audience for the inside hopefully, joke. Hopefully, hopefully. So yeah, moving to the new model, which is going to be Swiss uh, movement and Swiss made as well. Right? Inshallah, yes. That's, uh, that's the idea. Uh, we're in the process of securing the movement. Uh, and I am... Uh, we are going to try and uh, use the learnings we've had with the first watches to to do things a little better. Uh, one one issue, for instance, is that uh, I didn't bring it today, but the watch box um, is big. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to do, <clears throat> excuse me, what I wanted to do, because I know that watch boxes, they're good, they look good, they're great, but once you have your watch, it just sits somewhere in a corner gathering dust. And so what I wanted to do is to have uh, a watch box that could have some sort of use. And since everybody likes coffee table books, I was like, why don't we make it look like a table, a uh, coffee table book and you put it on your coffee table in the middle of your living room. And so we ended up having this big carton recycled carton uh, box which because shipping is included in the price so we sell only online as you know only yep. on our website and there's a reason for that uh, so shipping is embedded in the price i realized that when we started shipping watches that each shipment was costing us about 160 dollars that's 10 percent of the retail yes. price which is huge uh, but well, it's done and now we're moving to the next watches that we're launching next year uh, or after the summer where we'll go to a more traditional approach, but still with a twist. And what about the complication? Any insights you would like to share? I want it to be a useful complication yes. and I need it to make sense. So 
Uh, and to resonate with the with one of the values, and to the resonate value with the value. So the, the so the value of togetherness, um, we are going with the concept that we are the result of the influences we've had throughout our life, people who influenced us the most, and there are three constants in everybody's life, most people at least. The first one is your cousins and siblings. people who are close to you in age, uh, who were children when you were a child and who were teenagers when you were a teen and who became young adults when you became a young adult. Those are the ones you had fun with. Those are the ones you fought with. Those are the ones that tested your limits and you tested theirs. And um, I want to pay tribute to those. Then I want to pay tribute to teachers and mentors. people who were older than us, more experienced than us, and who saw in us something that we weren't aware of in the first place. In yeah. my case, Christophe Niquez and Benoit de Clerc, for instance. Uh, they saw something in me in my career. Uh, they saw that I had potential and hopefully I didn't let them down. And uh, they gave me a chance and I will forever be grateful to them. Um, and then, of course, mom and dad. They gave us our values, our principles of lives, our uh, belief in ourselves, etc., etc. Now, I live in Dubai. One of my mentors lives in Switzerland. The other one lives here. My parents live in Morocco. My cousins in Morocco, in France. We're all in different time zones. Taking all of this into account, what do you think? would be a good yeah i have something in mind but <laughs> a uh, good i would rather i would rather do. leave it uh, as a, as right, a let, let's see in the comments if people comment yeah, and try and guess. exactly <laughs> exactly let Just us make know. this uh, <laughs> more exciting <laughs> uh, interactive right? yes exactly so uh, l- let us know what do you think uh, the, the next complication is gonna be i have one last question uh what's your aspiration for the brand where do you want the brand to be Um, many things. Uh, I'll I'll answer with uh, with a small story. Yes, uh, sure. A little over a year ago, before I launched, uh, I was given the opportunity through a good friend of mine to do a three-hour kind of master class on entrepreneurship mm-hmm. uh, to the students of a business school from Paris who were visiting here. Now, I'm an okay entrepreneur, uh, but uh, the idea was, uh, I know this guy, he's a friend, he's launching his own watch brand, he's got a nice story to tell, because the exercise of building a brand, I mean, when I launched this in April uh, of 2023, I had been working on Magana for almost two years, um, and there's a whole... load yeah. of stuff that need to be done to create a brand. And I was, you know, it's learn as you go kind of thing. There is no school that teaches you that. And so I went to present and one of the slides were, where do I see Magana five years from now? And what oh. are my KPIs? And my KPIs were not in dollar value. They were not in number of watches say, sold and they were not in number of customers acquired. My KPI was by the year uh, 2028, I want Magana to be responsible for the planting of a quarter million trees. So that's my KPI. First five Which years. Which is going to be translated into sales as well. I mean, of course. So, <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but you didn't put the dollar value that you put, you put the, the, the. Because to plant the trees, I know how much I need to spend. Yes. Right, I can say, so these watches sell today for 1600 US dollars. The next one would probably be more because Swiss made and different complications and Swiss movements, etc. Maybe I'll go up to $20,000 or maybe I'll stick to a $500 price point. I don't know. Depends. I don't know. I need to see how the market reacts, etc. But the one constant, I want to have 250,000 uh, trees. planted by Magana before the end of 2028. Hopefully, 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 hopefully me and you we celebrate here the quarter inshallah. million trees, inshallah, in not much, huh? four years, four years huh? 
uh, you have a lot to do, my friend. <laughs> and I, I'm not even at 10% of that. I'm not uh, no, I'm no, at but 22,000. No, but you never know. Um, I mean, since since the the episode came to an end, um, I would I would really like to thank you, uh, Omar, for joining. It has been very informative and enjoyable. And um, really, I, I, I don't want this to end. Um, so again, thank you for for. Let's go to dinner and we keep talking. Yeah, yeah we're gonna <laughs> keep talking as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for accepting the invite. Thank and, you, Ahmed. and next time I'm gonna be inviting you as a collector since you're sure. a, so, since you are a heavy um, and and very unique collector. Uh, so yeah, unique there, there sure, but heavy. No, no, no. You, heavy is not in the value, by the way. It's uh, okay. Then it's in the depth. So this is one of the things that I learned. Um, so yeah. Uh, until next time, I think. Uh, yeah, and for those who are watching us, uh, thank you so much for joining us. This episode is gonna be available uh, on YouTube and all other uh, podcast platforms. Until next time, and until another watch enthusiast, and see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you.